The Fine Arts Center Theater Company, a division of the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center at Colorado College, proudly presents Of Spacious Skies, an audio play series. This week, episode one, Beautiful by Melissa Annis. It's the summer of 1893. Catherine Lee Bates and her companion Catherine Coleman are headed west to Colorado Springs. Let's join them as they navigate the train station in Chicago. All aboard! Come on! I'm coming! We can't miss this train! I know! Excuse me, where's the train to Colorado? Over there. It's about to leave. Thank you! Hurry! This should be... Yes, this is us. Oh, that was close. Too close. <laughs> oh, here we go! <laughs> ah, the next leg of our great adventure. Ladies? Oh, our tickets. Here they are. Miss Bates? Yes. Miss Coleman? That's me. Just the two of you? Is there a problem? No problem. Will there be anything else? You little ladies, be careful now. A porter will come by to make your beds at eight. You little ladies, be careful now. <laughs> June, 1893. Rolling out of Chicago, a city gleaming with the shining example of American progress and exceptionalism. A phoenix, from the ashes she has grown. But as we move on to our next adventure, my mind can't help but wander home. Home, where the fog rolls in and the fishing boats bob to the hum of their own tune. Home is so far away. Catherine, get your head out of that notebook and look out the window. As far as the eye can see, amber fields dancing in the wake of the train. And the sky is unlike any sky I've ever seen before. Expansive and overwhelming. By night, darkness blankets us in a velvet embrace as we climb closer to the stars. What are you thinking about? My lectures. You know Chaucer better than Chaucer himself by now. I want to make a good first impression on the students. You will. You always do. A light here for Colorado Springs. This is Colorado Springs. He said he would meet us at the station. Move along, ladies. Yes, yes. Be careful, there's a... Oh, blast! Puddle. Can you spare something? Piece of bread? My foot is soaked. Look, look at your shoe, Catherine. It's practically red. Ugh. Hello? That must be Dr. Eli waving at us. There you are, ladies. Welcome, welcome. Is this your luggage? Yes. Good. Now lift your skirts, ladies. Huh? The red earth, hellish to get off your clothes. L let's get you to your hotel. It's right over the road. Watch out! Yes, watch out for the traffic. <laughs> We are so glad to have you both here. The students are chomping at the bit. We're not teaching horses, I hope. Ha! Huh, that's funny. You're funny. That's good. Good evening. Our two guests have arrived. Here is your key. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at the college. I will arrange for a carriage to pick you up at seven. Good night. I'm very happy with our room. Are you happy with it? Yes, it's lovely. I wish we could see the view. It's so dark out. We'll see it in the morning. Look at this in Harper's. Pike's Peak at sunset. That'll be us. 
sitting on that mountain boulder. It'll be our reward for teaching all summer. Shall I take the middle drawer of the dresser? Mm-hmm. It's such a shame that Queen Palmer is away in Europe, isn't it? I would have liked to have said that I had shaken the hand of a queen. Hmm? You're tired. Why don't you lie down and I'll put our things away? Are you sure? Yes. Rest. I want to go on the big wheel. Introducing Cracker Jacks. This machine will wash your dishes. Take a ride on the moving sidewalk. It moves five cents a ride. It's almost time. Time for what? That's him. That's Mr. Tesla. He's going to change the world. He is? Six, five. Bright space. What's happening? Halfway. Where am I? Catherine. <sighs> you were having a bad dream. Good morning. It's early. Not that early. No, close the curtains. I have a headache. You need to eat. Leave me alone. Fine. I'll see you downstairs for breakfast. And Catherine? What? Look out the window before you come down. Ugh, fine. I'll get up. My goodness! There you are. The few! Breath. Sublime. And here is breakfast. Thank you. What are you wearing? Pantaloons. Just like that, you've decided to wear pantaloons. <laughs> yes, I want to make a good first impression on our students. So, what are we eating? Calves' brains scrambled with eggs. <laughs> when in Rome. Eat up. The carriage will be here soon. The good doctor has instructed our driver to take the long way to the college so we can see more of the town. There is so much to observe and so much building. There is growth here, despite the economic uncertainty of the future. Driving at the college. Thank you, sir. If this continues, we will be a nation of two halves. This way, I see the a seat. Quiet! Sorry. This is social Darwinism at its best, or should we say, worst. What hope is there for an America like this? All right, all right, there's no need to all rush out at once. That was quite a lecture. Thank you. There you are. Mrs. Dorothy Hamilton. Dot. Has transferred from Oberlin. Geology and environmental science. You? English. Oh. Economics, statistics, and sociology. Proud Wellesley women. Well, well. <gasps> Look at that. Pantaloons! We're going to get along just fine. Come on, we're going for tea. We're not far now. Look! They're playing polo. It's just like being back at Oxford. It gets a little bumpy. The roads are a work in progress. It's so nice of you to invite us to tea. My pleasure. Do you like it here? I do. A woman can be a woman here. What does that mean? I don't have to leave my calling card or wait to be invited out. I wake up get on my horse and go wherever I want, whenever I want, with whomever I want. Which is mostly just me, and that's just how I like it. There are many widowed women here. We practically run the town. Just don't tell the men. What's happening? Oh! oh! Hold on! We're falling! Oh! Are you all right? 
Yes, I think so. I'm fine. Got a mouthful of dirt. Look! There goes our wheel! It's rolling down the hill, and there goes our driver! Quick, help him! What? You heard! Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Dot is a formidable woman. I can't help but admire her. My companion seems taken with her, too. She is so sure of herself. I can't help but envy that. I can hardly keep my eyes open. I'll pour some water. We should wash our faces. Uh, in the morning. Mm, I quite like it here. Don't you? It's... Different. Good night, Kitty. Good night, Catherine. There are 4,000 millionaires currently living in this country. After some weeks, lecturing became easier. The breathlessness that comes with the altitude has eased. My dreams, however, continue to wake me at night. And I find myself wrestling with ideas of science and nature. Are you done with your lectures? Yes. I think I've exhausted the wife of Bath for the summer. Good. Here you go. Pike's Peak at sunset. This is that old Harper's magazine. You kept this all summer? Pike's Peak or bust, we're going up. When? Now! I'm not going up there on that. There's got to be another way up the mountain. A horse? You can walk. That could take you days. Mules are better. Take my hand, and whenever you feel scared... I'm not scared. Then get on the blasted cart. Catherine, I won't let you fall off the mule or the mountain. Are you getting on or not? <sighs> Good. Onwards and upwards. Do you think I should wake the doctor? Let him be. (laughs) As the climb gets steeper, The quadrants of the town are far away and gradually disappear. I can no longer see the college with its manicured lawn, the tidy trees or the stone houses, or the wooden huts, or the crude pathways that scar the land. It's all fading away. 11,000 feet. Up past the frozen earth to a ghostly forest, up to the gate of heaven. Catherine, you're shivering. I didn't notice it getting so cold. Give me your hands. How long have you two... We're just colleagues. And any insinuation of anything else would be completely inappropriate. And I would ask you to please mind your own business. All this fresh air has me forgetting my manners. This is as far as I go. We're almost at the summit. Wasn't that a pleasant ride? Help me down, Doctor. What's the rush, Dot? What's wrong with you? You're embarrassing me. Me? You've been in a foul mood for well over a week. This is supposed to be fun. You should have left me where I was, in Falmouth. You were miserable. Perhaps I'm happiest when I'm in despair. Perhaps I find it comforting. Perhaps it's where I'm most at home. You're being ridiculous. Am I? This is exhausting. You are exhausting. Me? Your moods. I'm worried every time you dip into one of your moods that you'll... Don't you dare bring that up. That's not fair. There's hardly any air up here, and I won't waste my breath on a silly argument. I'm going to make my way to the summit. Sit on that boulder and enjoy the view I've been looking forward to seeing all summer. I wish you could see what's right in front of your face, Catherine. Wait for me! I'm coming! 
path is that way. I know. It could be worse. It could be a coyote. Yep. You don't want to be a coyote. He had a bag of sticks. Creator gave him. Said to the coyote, carry this bag of sticks over the hills. And told him not to open the bag. Not till you reach our sacred ground. But he was curious, and he looked inside the bag. And then a, a rush of people ran out, hollering. Hollering, hollering about this, hollering about that. <laughs> Can you imagine how shot Coyote must have been? Well, they ran all over the land. So we took what remaining people were still in the bag and put them on a sacred land. That there land over there. Coyote told Creator what happened. He cursed Coyote. Made him walk forever on four legs. Vanished him to the mountain to be alone. Creature of the night. See? Could be worse. Could be a Coyote. Now what do I know? I'm just a hollering stick. Donkeys need to take some rest. I'd like to leave in about... 40 minutes, if you don't mind. Catherine, come! Can you believe it? 14,000 feet! It's like we're on top of the world. We are on top of the world. I'm coming! And then I saw her. As if for the first time in my life. It's beautiful! And it goes on forever! I look across the plains over the purple mountains and and I have no words let's go sit on the boulder I'd like that careful these small rocks shift underfoot would you hold my hand there's no need to be afraid I'm not I'm not for spacious skies